Hi, this is a, a video about turning a photograph, the one you see here, into a uh, comic strip image as a background image for a figure. Um, so this is just preparing the image to have a figure on top of it. Oh, perhaps cover putting the finisher figure in in another video. So this is the image we're starting with, uh, which is a view of a medieval street, very nice. But uh, as you see, comic strip it is not. Now you can just put this into and prompt it into a, a, a vaguely comic strippy image, but the results aren't very pretty um, uh, or consistent. So what I'll do is I'll start with the basic setup that I'm using. It has a couple of features that are key to it working. So we've got a, a standard checkpoint, We've got one checkpoint drives the whole lot and then the rest of it is is all in um, separate modules uh, that we that we put we torment the image uh, into into becoming a uh, coherent comic strip image in several steps. So one main feature here is that the that a prompt is a global prompt. I share this prompt between all of the different modules. So I don't need to have to keep adjusting my prompt in each one. Each module, however, we'll start on the first one here, uh, which starts with the photograph. So there are, there's another prompt in here, another positive prompt, and it is merged with this one, with a conditioning concat, which takes this prompt, this prompt, and this prompt, and with mathematical magic, squashes the two together. So this prompt here has all style in it. There's no content at all. The content is all in the main global prompt. And the global prompt is just a description of what is in that picture. There's no style information in there. All the style information is in there. And uh, a very short negative for the things I don't want. I have a Laura, which is a Laura to do with drawing. It is going to take this image and it's going to turn it into a drawing, not a comic strip drawing. This is just the first stage. It's going to take it off into a, a different sort of drawing. To get from this to that, I have to process this image. So over here, and you, you can follow these lines across. This is processing the image before it goes into the sampler. So what I have here is essentially some utilities to uh, alter, the, alter the original image and take it away from the photographic in a very simple way. So I've used the uh, two color adjustment layers here, and one is about making these darks here. The other is the general feel of the image. And again, I blend these two together for the blend node. And one of the main important things is the image is coming in here and is being blurred slightly in this, and then it's being posterized. So I'll zoom in. So the total range is being reduced into all the darks have been made into a single fill color by the posterize. This is this stuff here is done by the posterize node. If you uh, you can probably see how that's all joined up. So when you run this, the result is a quite neutrally toned drawn image. So what it's done is it remove all the photographic feel to it. It's quite a nice image in itself. It's not totally interesting, but uh, it's quite useful. So that is the first stage. Take our image, process it through the image processing here, feed it into the encode through the sampler, and this is our end result. So here's the next stage. I have loaded the drawing image in. Uh, you can connect it up and run it all the way through. I don't do that because I'm adjusting each uh, pass uh, and I don't want the whole lot running like a sort of fancy machine. People really like uh, making huge long workflows that uh, everything like dominoes, it, the, the image works its way through. But I find it easier to control the whole um, shebang if I do it this way. So this is to push it towards being a comic. So we have a comic book Laura, which is comic book two, and we have a prompt, which is about comic strip. The negative prompt is the same as before. And this is our, our general uh, clip coming in, our, our prompt coming in. 
And again, the two prompts, these two and this, are mixed in the conditioning tomcat. We have another Laura here, which is very low level. It is just to supply, uh, I call it fanciness, a little bit of fanciness to it. A little bit of fantasy to the architecture. It's already fairly fantastic. So, uh, so And the other effect this has is to crisp up the details a little bit. We are uh, using a denoise of about, same as the previous one, uh, uh, about around 50%. So that means that this image is being changed by about 50%. Before this image goes into the uh, sampler, I'm doing a colour correction. I'm just adjusting the brightness and the gamma to give the image a little bit more punch because it's a bit washed out there. But the the colour correct mode does that quite easily. And that is more or less it. Uh, I am slightly blurring this image with another with a blur node before it goes into the sampler. This is just to give the model a little bit more leeway on uh, how it changes the image so it can it can it can change it uh, a little bit more smoothly if you blur it a little bit. So here we go, the seeds are fixed and you can see the various settings there. I'm using a turbo so uh, these uh, I, I'm doing 10 steps and uh, the seed is fixed. So here's the result which is pretty nice, it's quite good. Slightly lacking contrast again but we can adjust that later on. But generally I think I'm, I'm quite happy with that. There's no people, which is good. So we can always put people in later. There are some inconsistencies. The stone textures and this are all a bit fluffy. Uh, this doesn't make any sense. So our next stage is to just refine this image. It's almost how we want it. It's a little bit too busy and it's not quite crisp enough. So the next section will be dealing with that. Right, here we are in the final section, and here is our previous image loaded in. And uh, once again, uh, we can make... Uh, I haven't done any gamma alterations on this, but you, you can do if you want. So that's there in case this image needs to be tweaked. And this next section is very simple, really, really simple. I've got a, a cell shader, any cell shader, which is going to simplify some of these areas and uh, add some lines around the edges of things. Again, we have a prompt that reflects what we want. The negative remains the same. The positive remains the same and is coming in. And once again, we can, we are mixing this conditioning, this prompt with the global prompt up here, which describes what is in the image. And once again, we have a little bit of a higher change, but you can fiddle with this number. Uh, and I, I have six steps. You can have more if you want. And that is practically it. And here's the resultant image. So as you see, this distance here is now makes more sense. And everything is a little bit crisper and a little bit more comic strippy and uh, so forth. So that is fine. That does what I want. The next stage uh, is very, very simple. You probably all know how to do this. But uh, this is the upscale. So I do a little bit of sharpening. And then it's a standard two times that scale. And that's it. So I, I hope that's clear, the, the, the process. I, I use either IP adapter or control net to put the figure in. But I tend to always make my background, uh, I mean the stage setting that my uh, figure will be in, I make that separately because it, it gives so much more control. Uh, than trying to make the whole lot all happen with lots of complica complicated masks and so on. And they actually they actually reduce uh, your flexibility. So I make this as a modular workflow. And I can, if I wanted, I could connect this to this to this and have it come out in, in one go. But that doesn't really help refining. So as it is, I can isolate any of these by turning them off. I can just turn it to never, turn that to never, and this to never, and only this group will run uh, when you cue the prompt, which uh, I find uh, a very uh, useful way of working. But the key to this structure is to have the checkpoint outside and the global point prompt, which feeds into all of these. You can load multiple checkpoints, but it just gets too memory intensive and uh, 
and the whole lot uh, starts to run a little bit slow. Okay, that's the lot. Uh, thank you very much for watching.